Want to know about sensors and stats? This video has got the lot. I'll tell you everything about all of them. Stay tuned to the end because I've got a presentation and some special offers. Sensors and stats. We're going to check a selection here. Here we've got thermostats and then the rest of sensors. We've got a red plastic one there. We've got a single pin one there. Green ones and then a selection of colours. Blue, black and brass. So we'll start off with the thermostats. First of all, we go to ohms. We get open line or you may get a straight line on your meter. We'll put the two leads together, make sure it goes down to zero before the decimal point. So the first one we'll check is the white one. And if it's any good, it should go to naught. There we go. Second one we'll touch, same procedure again. It should go to naught. There we are. The third one, it should go to naught. Open line. So that one's popped. Obviously faulty there. And the last one, uh, we'll see what the red one does. And we've got a reading of about 12,000 ohms, which is room temperature. So actually, this is a temperature sensor, and the red plastic gives it away. White, black, that's a 100 degree limit stat or overheat thermostat. And one of those was faulty, the one that didn't go to naught. It just stayed as it was. The red button popped out, which means the boiler had cooked and therefore shut the boiler down. Uh, we need to replace that with a new one because we don't repair thermostats. The single one we can check again. So what we'll do now is we'll stay on ohms, but we'll just tilt it to the side. Uh, the black would normally be on the casing and the, the pin would be to the edge. A little bit awkward to do, so we'll put that onto there, we'll put that onto there and we'll see if we get a reading and if it's any good we should get some sort of about three to four thousand ohms which we've got and as the boiler gets hotter the ohms go down and gives less ohms through to the appliance and the flame is lower so that's a, a negative temperature coefficient which means only valence use these as a rule single wire black lead to the casing red lead to the terminal unplug now we've got a selection of sensors we've got some green ones here and some different colors what I've done is out of a boiler I've scrapped I've cut the lead off and put a connector block at the end to make life a lot easier so we'll put the connections it doesn't matter which is which but as long as we do have a good connection so we'll just tighten this down and make sure we've got a good connection and we put the red one into there and we'll make sure that one's screwed in properly and then we can proceed by plugging it in so now we'll simply slide the terminal over and see what readings I'm hoping like the other one we'll get about 12,000 ohms which we can't find on here here we go there we go and if it's any good we should be around 12,000 ohms there we are about 11,000 and if I hold it you'll see that my body temperature is gradually lowering the figure which means it's responding to the temperature they all should do this the same so we'll unplug this one because there's nothing wrong with that let's do the next one we'll plug that one in and what we're getting the same again about 11,000 we'll touch the end and it's dropping down so therefore this one's responding and let's do the last one we'll plug that one in and we're getting a reading 2300 this is already think it's cooking this is at something like about 80 degrees clearly it's not it's faulty and that's how we can tell a good one from a faulty one so that's the green ones so we can unplug that and then what we'll do is we'll transfer the leads over and we'll do the small ones. It's exactly the same procedure. We'll move that out the way. We'll put this one back in. And then we can do that one in there. This is a much tighter fit. And it's the same readings. Even though they're much smaller, we'll plug this one in and see what we get. Open line. Must be faulty because it's impossible. We're looking for 12,000 ohms. But let's plug the green one in, uh, the blue one in rather. Here we go, 12,000 ohms, so that's a good one. This black one, we'll plug that one in. And we've got another open line. So we've got two faulty ones here. And now we've got a selection of the pins. So we can disconnect this 
and then we'll go through each one. So here's our red one that we get. So remember, these are used by uh, Worcester boilers, very popular ones on those appliances. Back to use them, 12,000 ohms, just the same as these other ones. Here's a, an, another simple one. Again, we'll put it on the side. Not easy to do, but normally when it's screwed into the boiler, it is. So hopefully we should get also about 12,000 ohms. We're reading about 13, that's near enough. Uh, the same with this one, this is a Honeywell, again we can put it on the side and we should get the same sort of reading, about 12,000 ohms. And then the last one we'll do, same as the other one, put it to the side, not easy to do on this one, um, we haven't got a lead, these are too old. This is out of, out of a Potterton Lynx, can't get this one at all, we'll put that on there and put that one on there and then here we go we've got a movement still showing 12,000 ohms so therefore we've got a good one so we knew that the two black ones are faulty they were both open line and this is how we test sensors and stats and don't forget make sure that you've got some of these dedicated leads Inside every thermostat is a seesaw, which is set at various temperatures. 60 for hot water, 80 central heating, and 100, which is the limit overheat stat. So once the temperature has reached that, whether it's wet pocket or dry pocket, the thermostat will then disconnect and then shut down the boiler. Here's an example of three completely different thermostats, but notice that the boiler one is variable from 30 to 75. For a condensing boiler, I would recommend setting that at 60. The cylinder thermostat is always set at 60 degrees. The room thermostat in the lounge is variable. The maximum temperature is 22, but most houses that are well insulated, 18 to 20 should be good enough. There are two thermostats that switch things on. The one on the left is the pump overrun. So once the demand has been satisfied, the boiler switches off, but it's going to be very hot, full of latent heat. The pump overrun will now switch on and cool the boiler down to 59 degrees and switch off. And this is done via the external automatic bypass and the radiators. The frost thermostat has to be fitted to boilers in an unheated area and that will then switch the boiler on at 5 degrees and then switch off via the pipe start at 25 degrees. Sensors come in two types, wet pocket or dry pocket. The chart here, which is page 70 in the yellow book, will show you whether the ohms reading that we get corresponds with the temperature it should be and this way we can calculate whether it's good or it's faulty. The function of a sensor is simply to modulate the boiler from low, medium, high, medium, low so the temperature is maintained at a steady level and this is the most economical setting. The third sensor there is an NTC negative temperature coefficient often used by valent boilers and the way we test this is easy. We simply remove the wire from the top and put our red lead from our multimeter into that white little spot and then our black lead goes to the earth of the boiler and we measure it in ohms. Everything you need to know about sensor stats and all the faults are in the yellow book and it's page 68 and page 70 for the chart. We've got two apps available on both markets. The fault finding one is 21 chapters and the wiring one is 19 chapters and they cover everything that you need to know about breakdowns, testing and learning how to use the multimeter. If you're in the world of central heating, then I've written these two books, fault finding and wiring controls. Everything is in colour, easy to follow, spiral backed and it's on offer for £40 for both books, UK postcodes only. Please like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already because it really does help us out and if you have a question or a comment about central heating then please leave them down below. All the best and take care and we've got an offer. 
We've got an offer until the end of September, which is the 30th in 2025, that every orange wiring book will give you the small laminated wiring diagram for a two-zone S-plan system.